Okay, guys, so what we've got here is the Smock Nord, um, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but in here, um, the central pin there, so this one here is, um, oh, sorry, this one here is actually stuck down. Um, this is a few months old, so, um, you know, I'm guessing just a bit of juice has got down there and it's got all that sugar and stuff in it, hasn't it? So it's, it's obviously sort of wedged that. So it's obviously got these three screws on the ins or these four screws on either corner. Um, but by the looks of it, they're not actually going to let us remove anything until we've got either this front plate off or this back plate off. Um, I don't know what way round it needs to be removed. Um, I couldn't really find any videos online. So I'm going to try butchering it with this little screwdriver here. Um, I've really got no better tools available to do this. Um, I'm in the office, so uh, I'm not in a workshop or anything like that. I'm literally just in an office. I've just been designing some flyers. So uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and start trying to remove some of this stuff. And to be honest, these things are worth about 25 quid. So I'm not too worried about doing a bit of damage to it. Um, but obviously it might help someone along the line. See, what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a little narrow piece first. I would like to have spread the pressure a bit more, but I think just the smaller, the better on this. Yeah, that's butchering that completely. Um, right, what else could I do? Um, might just be a case of using the smallest one I've got and just, it's a little bit thinner. I don't know if you can see that, it's a little bit thinner on there. It's very small, but I'm mean, guessing these things, they're what, it's a case of once they're on, they're not really designed to come back off. Aha, there you go. So that's the key to success there. A smaller, the smallest screwdriver bit you've got seems to get into there nicely um, it seems to have some sort of sticky film on there as well um, yeah it's just a sticky yeah a little sticky pad okay so in here what we can see is we've got the battery um, yeah it's pretty much just all battery now I do have to work out how to get this off as well so okay so I've got a little pair of tweezers here um, this is all turned off. These tweezers are absolute rubbish. Um, right. Ah, I'll tell you what. Now we've got that off, I can actually change over to a little Torx bit. Um, and that should release this white bit here. So if I go ahead and do that, and hopefully that will give us some room to manoeuvre. Again, sort of playing this by ear, so not really sure what we're dealing with. I'm um, just going to bring this little tool set over here so I can actually see what I've got. Right, so little Torx bit. That looks about right. No, that's an Allen key. Um, oh, there we go. Right at the back there. Right, excellent. Straight off the bat, we're coming in at a jaunty angle. So that's making life really difficult. And I think that's a little bit big. Let's go down the next size. This is already looking like it's going to be... Oh, there you go. That one fits, but it has to go in at a, a funny angle. So if I just remove that and put that on there. Okay, so... All right, that's coming out lovely. Okay, so that's one little screw removed. I'm going to put that inside the... Uh, Case there, so it's fucking very sticky. Um, okay, and this one here, if I just get that one out as well. Obviously, I've got to do the rest of these. As you might have noticed, this is actually my main vape, um, and it is the only one I've got with me right now. And I've been trying to fix it for about half an hour to no joy, as you've probably noticed. And um, yeah. Nicotine withdrawal has given me the shakes. So doing this fiddly little job isn't particularly easy when you've got no real fine motor controls. <laughs> right, okay, so that's another one out. But these are going to be a laugh to get back in. Okay. See if these rubbish tweezers will work for us. I mean, like, who would 
Actually, how are you useless? Anyway, right. Well, not that useless because it worked. Right. So now to get this out. Do you know, just because we're explaining things, I might remove the front as well because you never know. It might be an easier way to do it. If it completely butchers it, I'll just buy a new one. Okay, so down here, this is where we started last time and it worked pretty well. Is there actually... Right, I reckon, judging by the little juts on here, I reckon if I go in here, that's sort of between the two points. So that should surely be a good place for it. So, pop that in there. There we go. I know this looks absolutely awful, but you see the front actually comes off a little bit easier. I don't know if that's just me or maybe better positioning or something. No, it's not. I was wrong. It's not easier at all. Right, so I'm going to have to get that in there. Then if I can... Sorry, if you guys can't see this because I just want to... No. Okay, and let's continue. So, so far, I've butchered it quite badly. Um, right. right, there we go. Oh, something else is coming with it this time including the button, actually everything is coming with it. Ah, oh, there's those pins. So, by the looks of it, pretty much everyth ah, everything is connected to that front panel there, um, except this, which is goes down into the bottom, and uh, we'll just quickly remove that. It's for probably never gonna get that back in the same way ever again, although it is the right shape, so I'll be able to judge it by the shape of that there. Okay, so, if we just pop the button out, Okay, right, so there's the button. Can this come off as well? Yeah, it's all just stuck on with sticky tape. Um, well, yeah, that's got quite a lot of um, liquid in it, actually. I suspect if mine's got a lot of liquid in it, everyone else's probably will have too, so it's probably a good time for a little wipe down. It's not too bad, it's just, you can just feel it. It's like not like it's swimming, but... Right, so this is the switch, and as I can see, the central pin in the middle there, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just, just in there, or just above the button. We can see that that's jammed. Now this little bit of rubber is I'm betting where we're gonna find, there we go. Okay, so it's got this little press switch. Now, see that has actually got a little bit of kind of damage around it. Now I've got absolutely nothing useful here that could actually probably get this little pin to come out. But that is the same as the other pins. Which is interesting. Now, as of all things, try pushing it down a little bit. No. Nope. Try pushing it up. I'm just going to check that they are all meant to sit. I've actually got another one. Um, oh, no, I've not got it with me. <sighs> this is overkill. I don't have any little pliers, so I'm going to have to try and be as accurate as I can with these big... Oh, there you go. What was I worried about? So, if I just... That looks like it's sat down there for ages, but it's got this just this brown... Or it's not brown, it's black, like layer around it now professional guy I am I do have a wet wipe <laughs> which is obviously not the perfect thing for doing this but should do the trick oh, it's coming back down again see the spring's gone in it that's the problem spring's gone I think again it's not a long term solution but as a way of making this so I can actually pull it back out again if I need it, I probably need to use a little snipe nose pair of pliers or something, but as much as it does protect it from the liquid, this little rubber thing prevents me actually getting to it. Although, yeah, yeah, I think it does. Um, yeah. 
So with that little spring gone in there, um, how does, does this white thing disconnect? I'm suspecting this little white bit here is actually glued on pretty well. I don't want to actually completely muller it because I've got a few hours until I've got to get home. Um, yeah, so it literally looks like that just pings out there. Now, how does the actual... Um, why does it sit on there? So it goes like that and then down. Yeah, so it's like that. Can you say that? So realistically, you'd have to push that down so hard. And how does that fit into there? It sits kind of flush and this sits kind of flush too. So without that rubber bit in there, should let's just see, like this is probably a bad idea, but let's just see, does this actually fire it? Okay, so with that all pressed in there. Nice, it didn't like that. Yeah, it's not making contact even with that all the way down there. I don't think that will. No, it's not, it's not making contact. So basically, unfortunately, if your pin is stuck down, the chances are, and tweezers, deary me. Yeah, I think if your pin's stuck down, the chances are it's not actually because it's just jammed, it's purely because the spring has gone in there. I mean, I'm guessing it's got like a tiny little spring or something in there. So yeah, this vape is pretty much done, really. I mean, I'm sure you can maybe remove these until they come off. You bet. You bet there's bound to be some available for sale, but to be honest, I mean, by the time you finish taking all this apart, I mean, what's on the back of here? Some sort of foam on here. Yeah, so they're soldered on by the looks of it. Let's continue. All right, so that's off there. Might as well do a full tear down for you guys, uh, seeing as we're this vape is actually knackered. Just so, uh, you know, if any of you are into soldering or you feel like taking the time to actually fix it, I'm going to turn this off again. Hang on. Okay, so that's off. I mean, while I don't really care about the vape anymore, I don't want to give myself any little shocks either. Okay. Is where it's just going to literally. I mean, if you try and get this off, it's probably just going to absolutely knacker it, I think. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think that is done. That is done, to be honest with you. So, that is what the smock Nord looks like inside. Here's your components. Move everything else out of the way quickly, including my wet wipes. Okay, so we've got our battery, the little charging port, two little wires that go up to the main circuit. The main circuit's here, which as you can see, it's just a fairly simple little circuit. And then to the top of that circuit is mounted three pins, all spring-loaded, um, including the middle one, if it was working. Um, as you can see, pull that out there. Again, not really got the correct tools for the job. Um, 3.7 volt. Uh, 4.07 watt hours, maybe? I don't know. I'm not an electrician. I'm an electrical engineer, even. Um, and then you've got this little rubber plate, which sits on top of here, which I'm guessing just sort of kind of semi-waterproofs it. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see that, but you've got those two pins sticking out there. And the one in the middle does not stick out, which makes the whole thing not work. Um... Then you've got your two little fascia plates, with four screws that normally go in, in there, in those four holes there. Um, and yeah, so I suppose realistically, 
Assuming that the next one, it's just a battery failure or something like that, then maybe that'll be of some use. But to be honest, yep, series kicking off in the background. Um, but yeah, so that's that's that. That's a shame. Now, can I get it to work? So if you feel like continuing to watch, please do. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull on this so hard, kind of jams it up. All right. If I squish that, that should stop it going back into the hole, shouldn't it? Well, that has distorted it a little bit and it can no longer go back into its hole. Now, I don't want to completely do it. Right, and squeeze. <sighs> okay. Right, so I don't know if you can see that now, but that has sort of, it's made it square, so it can't actually push down anymore. So if we just put that little rubber stopper back on top of it. Yeah, it does protrude out of there. And is it enough? Yeah, I reckon if we uh, roger that down enough, that should <laughs> that should stay on there. Now, what I might do is just try and pull it up a little bit more and just try and get as much of that on there as possible. So it's not going to be able to go back down on its own without some pretty serious force on it. Okay. Right, that's pretty nicely stuck up now. So that's not going back down in a hurry. Now, bear in mind, I'm only fixing this so I can finish my day at work without killing someone. But yeah, so that's now wedged up. Um, it's not square anymore. It's like this it's like weird little wedge shape. But looking at this, it does all sit together. It's just, will those corner ones still work? We'll see. Let's see. Right, so. Does this have a back and a front? <laughs> <laughs> probably should have looked at that before but so that needs to go right let's just stick this back on here to protect that yeah proper professional job now I just all I want to do is have a bit of my vape now so right and that goes on there like that so we just poke that through there try not to pull in these wires too hard because that will properly ruin the whole arrangement Fiddly. To be fair, it's not helped by the fact I decided to video record this. No, it has to go down that side first. No. Oh, I'm actually an idiot. It's actually much simpler than that. <laughs> okay, so that sits in there like a, oh, it's everything sticky. There we go. Right, so that's in there, and that needs to go up into there and pop up. Okay, so everything's sat in there now. Now what I need to do is get these little screws back in. Ugh, made a bad move, making everything sticky. Okay, so we need a little Torx driver. So switch back over to the Torx. Okay, and stick that on there. Let's just push that back down, but if I just nip that, there we go. Right, won't do it up tight just yet. So if I had some better quality gear, I might have been able to do a better job of this, but to be honest with you, we're a bit restricted in what we can actually do. Okay, so that's two corners in, the rest should line up. I mean, there's little screws themselves anyway, they're not, you know, they're just little they're not self-tappers, obviously, but they're not far off it. Okay, into the top corner there. I mean, this one has definitely just self-tapped, but oh well. And then we've got this one. Okay. 
Okay, so I will just give these a little nip, not too tight. It hasn't got to be perfect, has it? There we go. And that one. And one more. That one. There we go. Right, so I suppose what we can do is slot that in there. Well, this is all... Yeah, see, that's not sitting down anymore, but that probably isn't a bad thing. And then one, two, three, four, five. There we go, it's on. Can you hear that? Yes. Right, okay, so that's all back on. So now what we've got to do is one of these sides has got the button on it. That's this side. Um, and by the looks of it, see that's, is that snapped? That's just a bit of like paint come off, I think. Nothing to worry about. Um, so that can just, I think that sits on top of there. I think it goes kind of between the battery and the, the top. So at this stage, I'm not actually too worried about what goes where, but does that go below or above? I'm thinking above. Okay, that's clipped in there. It doesn't fill completely. This is a bit like if you've ever disassembled a car dashboard. Um, never really goes back the same, unfortunately. Right, these, they're all just normal clips. Um, by the looks of it, the bottom goes in first. Then Okay. All right, so as you can see, I mean, that's got a little bit of damage on it. Ooh, fuck. All right. Let's smooth that off. There we go. Yeah, it's not perfect. I mean, I suppose if you're in a, if you're in a situation, you can just wedge that pin up. I mean, it's, it's knackered, but, you know, it will do the trick. And to be honest, it's probably just as strong as it ever has been, but. And that is uh, fixing the uh, smock Nord. Hope you enjoyed the video guys and uh, I hope it helps someone in the future. I mean, obviously we've done damage to the case here, which I think, you know, maybe if I had the right tools and a bit of time, would have been able to do a better job of that. But. It does the trick and uh, yeah, I can now enjoy the rest of my day at the office and um, survive it without killing someone. Thanks for watching guys and I'll speak to you uh, maybe soon. You never know, I might rip something else apart. Cheers guys. Bye bye.